This is one of those big old TV entertainment centers where you used to get like the 36 inch TV and throw it up in there. It no longer fits people's TVs anymore. So I have the panel for this. What we do with these is we cut them in half. So I'm going to cut it right here and then we cut the top off. We cut it right here and right here I'll cut all this trim off and then this top will be up on there. Oh look there's a jack inside of there. Hey Jack! <laughs> This won't look very good on the top, so we'll go ahead and plank that, and then we'll have a short, more modern entertainment center that a TV can go on the top of, oh instead of just having something that doesn't work in people's homes anymore. When taking apart older furniture, I always save all the clasps. I usually end up having to buy these if I run out of them, so when I find them, I hang on to them, because they're nice to have. I've made the two cuts, now I just need to get this off of here and this back will be free. This is looking better already. I've got that drawer panel in, it just had these clasps in there and then it was a little wobbly so I put a screw in there, three of them to hold it tight and much better now. So now I just need to take the crown off the top of the piece and attach it to this top here and plank it. This is a Chicago electric reciprocating saw. I picked it up because I was just busting down a bunch of pallets and I have a video on that. I was using them to make signs at the time, but I didn't expect it to last very long. I've had it two years now and it is great for projects like this because I'm going to be able to just dip that blade down and cut right along this line without having to beat this up and pull it apart because this is glued down and nailed down pretty well and it doesn't come apart very easily. The thing about using that reciprocating saw is sometimes it's hard to make a perfectly straight cut because that blade's real flexible. So I'm going to take some 80 grit sandpaper in here and just clean all this up and make it real flat and even so that it looks a little better when I attach it to the other part. Alright, so that's what that's going to look like for the most part. I'll go ahead and plank the top here and that'll be finished and ready for Jamie to paint. Before I can attach the top, I've got to give it something to attach to. So I'm going to glue these one inch strips along the bottom of this board here on the underside of the crown piece. And then I'm just going to staple them in. Here's the back view. I'm gonna drill a half inch hole across the top here. That way I can get my drill bit down into here and screw into these and drill down into that top. I've got an inch and five eighths screw here and I'm just gonna, I've got my long drill bit on here, it's about six inches, and let's see, it's not magnetic, so, oh, stabbed on the first time. Winning! Sometimes, when you make your cuts like a drunken sailor, you get to practice your putty work. I'm just using uh, the DAP Alex Plus Spackling. Zip. 
cut this down for me and we are ready to paint the bottom part of it and then we'll plank the top. I'm gonna to be using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in Moody Blue. I've got a little bit left in these two packages which should be more than enough to paint the outside of this piece. To buy this paint, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. First things first though, I gotta wash this piece. It's yucky and gross and you never wanna paint over a dirty piece. Sometimes I just use soap and water, but in this case it's already been painted, so the wood's pretty well protected, and I'm just using Target bleach cleaner. It's gonna get this nice and clean, and I'm using a lint-free rag that's damp to get all that cleaner off. I can already tell this piece is kind of shiny, so I'm definitely gonna add extra bond to my paint so it doesn't all chip off. So I get a lot of people that ask me, they're like, how hard is it to mix up milk paint? If you can make hot cocoa, you can make milk paint. Um, it should be like a melted milkshake consistency. That's how you know you've done it right. And once you've done it enough, you kind of get it down to a system that you like. Some people like it thicker, some people like it thinner, and that's kind of one of the reasons I like it, because you can really make it do whatever you want. I'm using my zebra brush that, if you watched our live video, I cut off on live, live TV the other day. And I'm just gonna paint the outside of this. I used extra bond in my paint because this is pretty shiny and I don't want it to all flake off. So I'm just gonna paint it. The first coat always looks a little thin and wonky, but usually by the second coat it's much better and pretty good coverage. Sometimes you need a third coat, but usually two coats and a little bit of touch up is good enough. In the winter time, I use milk paint a little bit more often because it's no VOC, all natural, and I can brush it on and it still looks great. In the summertime and when it's warmer outside, I spray most of my paints and so I do less milk paint and more of my chalk paint and the DIY paint. Although I can brush DIY paint pretty good too. And you can brush the, the Fairy Chalk Mothers paint. I just feel like it's not as smooth as the other two when you sand it down. So for brushing, I really like the milk paint and then for spraying, I use the chalk paint. It just kind of depends on what I'm doing. And sometimes you can't spray or you don't know how to spray and brushing is just fine. And nothing's wrong with brush strokes. I always get the, I hate brush strokes. If you hate brush strokes, then you should probably spray everything. Don't try to brush and get rid of all your brush strokes. I mean, you can, you can do certain brush techniques and buff every layer and you can get rid of most of your strokes, but what's the point? Why are you hand painting then? And some of the joy and some of the beauty in hand painted products is that you can see that somebody actually took the time to put their love into it and to brush it on. Okay, now once I get it all on there, I usually like to go back through and mix my, make my brush strokes a little bit more uniform, less crazy. I get this question a lot. So they'll tell me, aren't you gonna take the doors off and not paint over the hinges? For the most part, I do not take doors off. I do paint over hinges. Yes, the paint chips off and no, I don't care because I like the look of it. And usually when I'm all done, I come back in and I clean up all my edges so it's not wonky and I make sure that I've got a nice flat surface. You can do that with just like a damp rag and clean up your paint and then also the damp rag will like smooth any ridges you get from just painting it. It's so much easier to paint it when it's all together than taking the whole thing apart. And there are tons of people that paint furniture that are friends of mine that do the exact same thing. So really it's just a matter of personal preference. All right, so I told you before that when you have the first coat, it's kind of thin, but I want to show you when you're doing the second coat of milk paint, how it goes on, how much more coverage you get. So the first coat is kind of like that, what I call the tack coat. And the second coat is more like coverage. And you can put it on just a little bit thicker because it's going to adhere to the first coat. Look how well that's covering now. And in my case, I'm going to do a pretty good distress. So I've got some light spots, so I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna actually probably do some sort of either dry brushing technique or a white wax over it, because I like to add texture with that. This is probably going to be my last coat. Okay, you can see that there's something different going on than when you saw what I was painting. I added some pantry door on and I sprayed it. So I kinda wanna show you what I'm doing. Now don't be afraid. 
It'll get worse before it gets better. I'm just brushing this on here and I like to work in small areas. This is kind of a technique that I learned from my friend, the turquoise iris. And once it's all done, it's gonna get um, sanded and blended and there's gonna be white wax. So it'll be good. I just take my squirt bottle. and blur all the lines. The next thing I'm gonna do, and I did this on my chair thing, is I'm just gonna take my putty knife and go across and blend the colors and add some texture. Okay, so it's all the way dry and I could just wet distress it, but to me that takes too long. So I've got my 220 sandpaper on my orbital sander and I'm gonna go over the whole thing and smooth it out and then I'll wet distress all the details. For the top, we're gonna do a three-step process, starting with Jacobian, then we're gonna move into our mix of Fairy Chalk Mother gray wash that has like 800 different colors, but it works great as a gray wash. And the final, is gonna be this whitewash pickling, and I'm hoping that when I mush them all together, it gives a great beachy look, because that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. We'll find out. Didn't let it dry, just went straight into the next phase, the whitewash or gray wash. You can see the variations here. We've got the grays and the dark, and then we're really gonna lighten it up with this whitewash pickling. You could use a whitewash pickling, or you could also just use chalk paint watered down as well. Very chalk mother snowflake works great for this. So you just put it right over the top. I'm just adding an extra color dimension here. None of it is dry, it's all just kind of blending together. And then once it's dry all the way, I'll go back over and sand it smooth and bring out some of that wood grain. You can also see how the stain, because it's oil-based, is seeping through and giving us a freckled effect. That will come through some more. If you don't like that, then you need to make sure your stain is all the way dry. So I'm taking my stubby wax brush and I've made white wax using smeary wax and fairy chalk mother and snowflake. If you don't have smeary wax, pretty much any white wax will do. One of the things I love about smeary wax though is that you can buy one thing of wax and then it chemically bonds to the chalk paint so you can make any color you want for different effects. You could just leave it as is and seal it, but I'm wanting to soften it just a little bit so I'm hoping that by doing this it will soften it and then we'll seal it once we're done. So I'm just putting this on here. Kind of gives it a, I'm going for a beachy whitewashed effect. Once I get it on in a small area, then I take my rag and I just smear it across and wipe off the excess. Okay, so we're gonna put this T underneath here so that way it gives us something to staple the top to. This is just leftover wood from the bottom of a like bed or whatever that we just saved. So we're putting it there. Just make sure if you're doing this that this is flush here and then you're good to go with whatever wood that you use. I have a pneumatic staple gun and it's got brads inside and I'm just going to attach this. want it and then we're going to go ahead and staple this one and then do each board in succession. All right, that's tight. my orbital sander 
and it's got pretty worn down to 20 on it and I'm just gonna try to blend this and pull out the grain a little bit more. You could also do this part by hand but it's a little bit faster with this. So there's a lot of ways I could finish this off. Definitely this is something that you could finish with some of our wax that we sell on our website. But for ease of use, I'm just gonna seal it with my poly acrylic and my gun. I would say that the top you wouldn't want to seal with wax. If you don't have a sprayer, you can brush poly acrylic on the top or we have a great sealer called Big Top. It's under my DIY paints. It lays down really flat, seals really hard, and it's kind of a matte satin finish so you won't get a lot of shine. The piece is... Jack, what are you doing in there? Surprise! We're doing our outro. Here, you stay in there. Stay in there. We're going to shut you in and then we'll surprise open you out. You go boom! So this is all finished. It turned out pretty amazing. I used my turquoise iris finish that I learned at DIY Boot Camp. Be sure to check her out on Facebook and Instagram. We used Sweet Pickett's Milk Paint and Moody Blue and Pantry Door and then did a layered technique and Zev did a pretty good job cutting it in half. Yeah, cutting it in half was a lot of fun. Sometimes they go a little easier, but this one didn't slide down overneath, over the top. Sometimes the top just slides down, but I had to actually connect it. And you guys saw how I did that. But I'm in a little bit of trouble because I didn't take a before picture of it. So we have like the fun sideways picture. I'll see if I can stand it up and stand rotate it, it right in way. Photoshop and see what happens. But at least it gives you a good idea when don't pass up. A lot of people get rid of them, uh, those big TV armors. This gives you an idea of a way that you can repurpose them into something else. And sometimes we'll take the bottom and do this and then take the top and put some feet on it and make a little curio, okay. I can't even talk, little curio cabinets. So it's a good way to reuse stuff that's gonna wind up in the dump. I also am totally in love with this paint finish. So if you don't love it, I'm sorry, because you're gonna see more fun layered textured finishes on our channel for we sure. We've painted a lot of white for a long time. You guys know how to paint white. You got the white down, so now we're gonna do some layered stuff. Be sure to go to Jamie Ray Vintage and check out Sweet Pickens Milk Paint so you can buy the paint that I used today. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. All right, Jack, you can come out now. Boom! Boom. All right, good job.